Hi, welcome to the live stream of the Faculty of Social Studies at Mass Duke University. My name is Erin and I am an alumni of the faculty. And today I'm joined by Anjanette, Novinta, and Eva, who are current students, and also by uh, Clara, who is our admissions contact for our programs in English. We hope that we are able to show with you what it's like to study at our faculty, as well as what it's like to be a student in Brno. The Faculty of Social Studies has its roots stretching back until the 1920s, when the Department of Sociology was established, creating one of the oldest sociological institutes in Europe. While some of our ties may be old, our style definitely isn't. We also boast of state-of-the-art technologies and classrooms, and our library, where I'm currently am located, has great study rooms to be. Uh, to start us off, we want to give you a quick tour of the faculty, and then we will continue with the discussion by the students. Uh, throughout the whole session, please feel free to ask any questions in the chat, and we will be answering them at the end of the live stream. I'm Hannah, and this is the Faculty of Social Studies. Come on in. This is our atrium, the heart of the faculty and a place to gather. It's also a favorite spot for various film screenings, events, and so on. I simply love it here. This is a perfect place to study or to discuss work with your friends or to simply have a snack. But if you want to see how it looks on the roof, no, 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 we're going to get there later. But now, let's check out the TV studio. Students can experience working with professional equipment here, and it helps them to get a job in media all across the world. This is Hannah checking in from our state of the art TV studio. Breaking news, video didn't kill our radio star. All right, that's right. Come and see for yourself. Actually, our student radio is the largest student media in Central Europe. Oh, sorry, guys, I didn't want to interrupt you. Please continue. You know, this happens quite often because radio is not only about broadcasting, but there's a lot of people in off air doing marketing, PR, event management, and many other cool job positions. Let's have a look what's happening in the studio. So you told me that you're from Ecuador, right? And you study on Faculty of Social Studies. And what kind of program do you study? Um, I do my bachelor's full time in uh -huh. international relations and European politics. Uh -huh. And do you enjoy it? I do, yes. And this is our library. People come here to study since there are tens of thousands of volumes on all the fields taught here. And you know what's cool? From all these computers, you can access academic journals or professional databases. And if it doesn't seem so cool right now, it will after your first semester, trust me. And now let's go check out the roof like I promised you. Okay, I will leave you for now since this is one of my favorite places to relax. See you later. So um, now that you were able to see a little bit of what our faculty looks like, uh, one of the things I really wanted to just uh, emphasize is, is that the, the great thing is, is that no matter what department you study in, no matter what your program, things like the TV studio or the radio are, uh, do not have limited access. Anyone can actually join the student organizations that work in them. And that means that actually some of our international students have created their own podcasts. So um, to just quickly also talk about the ways that you can study here, uh, we actually have um, uh, multiple different uh, bachelor's and master's programs that are in uh, our seven different uh, departments. So we at the faculty have the departments of environmental studies, international relations and European studies, media studies and journalism, political science, psychology, social policy and social work and sociology. And if you're then wondering what actually does each of those program uh, departments actually offer. Um, students can come here for their bachelor's and study international relations and European politics. And actually in a year or so, we will be launching two new uh, programs. So I encourage you to check our website to see what those new bachelor's programs are. And if you're interested in your master's, 
you can come and study here conflict and democracy studies, cultural sociology, international relations and European politics, oh, international relations, Europe from the Visegrad perspective, energy policy studies, European governance, public and social policy, and human resources and sociology. So you can, as you can see, there's a lot to choose from and those are just our bachelor's and master's. There are also many PhD programs you can choose from. So what I would like to do now is to actually uh, bring in our students so that we can actually talk about what the student experience is like. Uh, so uh, thanks guys for joining. Um, I was uh, would like to start off with actually, if you could introduce yourselves, uh, tell us where, what you study and where you're from. So uh, Anjanette, if you would like to kick us off, that would be great. Cool, yeah, sure. So hi everyone, my name is Anjanette. Um, I come from Dubai and I've been living here in Brno to study at Masaryk University. I'm currently doing my master's in international relations and European politics. I've recently just graduated from the bachelor's level of the same program. And so, yeah, I started the master's this fall. That's it from me. Oh, would you like to uh, go next? Yes, hi, I'm Eva. I'm in my third semester of the Conflict and Democracy Studies program uh, at Masaryk for Masters, and I'm from the United States. So that would leave you, Novinta. <laughs> yes, hey everyone, how are you doing? I'm Novinta from Indonesia. I'm currently doing my Masters in Cultural Sociology at Masaryk University. Um, previously, I studied philosophy in Jakarta, Indonesia, but I moved to Malaysia and then again moved to Bali and now here I am in Brno and I love it here. Thanks guys. So um, I guess the probably the main question that almost every international student thinks about before deciding where um, where to study is actually why to leave their home country. So could you guys talk a little bit about what you made made you decide to even consider studying in a different country and Eva maybe you would like to set us off. Yeah, so uh, this is not the first experience I've had studying in a different country. And the reason it's not the first experience is because I think um, you, you will still have the same educational experience. Uh, we'll talk more about the classes and faculty uh, specifically, but you can add on to that learning in tons of other ways, um, social and cultural competencies, like building this into your experience, meeting people, especially as a social studies student from completely different backgrounds. Um, so kind of turning your entire life into more of a learning experience instead of just yeah in the classroom as typical. Yeah, I um, I think that's actually a really great reason and probably one of the main reasons why I also chose to study in a different country. Um, and Janine and Novinta, do you guys have any other thoughts? Um, um, yeah, actually, for me, I mostly wanted to study in a different country because I felt like um, I wanted to experience some more uh, a different environment than what I grew up in. Dubai is a very international environment and an international community, but I thought that I wanted to do that, but also with studies. So that's why I came to Brno, as I knew it was one of the best student cities in Europe and I wanted to be in Europe. So that's why I ended up here. For me, I, I had been dreaming of studying in Europe and then I went to a European higher education fair in Jakarta and um, there was a check stand and then I, I got a um, Masaryk University brochure and then that, that's where I, um, I, I knew that I, I was about to study here. I just knew it. <laughs> that's great. Um, so I, I'm wondering what you guys uh, think can tell us about your favorite thing to do in Bruno. That's, you know, when you're not studying all the wonderful classes, but when you get to be outside, what do you like to do? Uh, yeah, well, lately, um, I have come to realize how many different and interesting neighborhoods there are. Actually, um, you can, it's, <laughs> it's not such a big city that you'll ever feel overwhelmed by being here, but it's big enough that you're constantly finding new things uh, within the city. So even in the center, 
there are new like passages, alleyways that you can find to walk through and suddenly you have a new shortcut or there are entire neighborhoods where you can find uh, architectural guides online and then do a walk through yourself to kind of understand the history and also appreciate some beautiful things that you wouldn't have found on your own. So I think that balance of exploring but also feeling familiar, I just quite enjoy being in the city most of the time. So. That's really cool to hear of, actually, because I didn't think of that, but maybe I'll put that on my to-do list of cool things. Um, recently for me, and I think that the whole time that I've been living here in Brno, I've always enjoyed going to all the small cafes in the city. Brno has a lot of um, cafes to choose from with different styles. Like if you're into modern style cafes, if you're looking to be it steampunk themed cafes so it's kind of just nice to take a book and enjoy the nice coffee Brno has a really nice coffee culture as well and i really enjoy doing that in my free time experiencing new cafes and new places to be with different people to meet as well so that's something i like to do yeah and janet i could i could totally relate to that because um i'm a coffee lover and then Brno has a lot of third wave coffee shops and that is one of my favorite things about this city as well. Um, I always order flat white or um, cappuccino. And yeah, Brno has a lot to offer as well. For example, um, uh, we have a, a lake. Uh, it's, it's a dam. And I usually go there on the weekend with my friends or with my partner. So yeah, it, it's really beautiful there. Great. I love hearing what people like about uh, about the city, especially for when you've lived here for a little while. Um, so I, I'm wondering, actually, going on along with this thought of living, like if you could describe, uh, do you live in dormitories and primary accommodations, or if you lived in both, uh, what's some of the pluses and minuses of that? Yeah, I started out living in a dormitory uh, for the first one and a half semesters really. And actually I loved it. I was a bit reluctant because uh, in the past, yeah, I've had all kinds of different experiences, but I was very comfortable. I was really lucky and I had a great roommate. So we're, she's no longer in Brno. She was also an international student, but we're still in touch all the time. And I can say it's quite comfortable. It's quite um, convenient to get between the dormitory I was living in and the uh, faculty, which was great uh, in the morning. <laughs> and yeah, now I am actually living in a flat, which yeah, it's different experience, but also really nice. Um, in general, it's more expensive, um, but I think, if you are making a value decision to live in a dormitory, you're not actually losing anything. Um, it's completely comfortable. It's not this big sacrifice. So it does make sense as well. Um, similarly, like Eva, I was actually living in the dorms as well in the beginning. I think I lived there for the first two years or yeah, the first two years that I was here in Brno. Um, I liked it there because it, helped me meet a lot of friends and get to know people more like much like if i think it's really normal over here to be friends with your roommate and be in touch with them even after like you move on and live in a different accommodation um i eventually moved to a private flat uh because i kind of i have cooking as a hobby and i like to have a nice big space in a kitchen where I like to cook a lot of meals and kind of have my own space. I mean, cooking in the dormitory kitchens are also nice. You get to socialize and have fun little get togethers and big dinners with friends, but it's also nice to have your own space and know that you won't have to wait your turn like to use the stove or something. So, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's awesome. Me too. I, I love cooking and um, for me, I've always been living in a private flat, but I have visited um, my friends in their dormitory, and there are there are some dormitories that have uh, amazing views. Or um, yeah, I I, I I agree that dormitory is a, is a place to you know socialize. It's a better place than private flat. But for me, because I have a part time job and I like to be secluded and concentrate on my work and study, so I that's why I chose private flat. <laughs> Yeah, those are, are all good reasons, I think, and, and kind of can help people figure out what is the best fit for them. Um, so I guess 
Uh, can you guys talk a little bit now about your academic life? What um, what are some of the highlights that you have from classes and everything? Yeah, um, well, I think uh, each program is going to be different, so I can really only speak to mine. But uh, I actually have also been able, which I didn't realize when I started, to take classes from international relations, which is very connected to my major. But yeah, it's not exactly in the same uh, department of the faculty. so. Um, I think being able to kind of reach into other areas that you're interested in, because there are English programs pretty much across the board. Uh, so if you can kind of pull classes into your program, sometimes you need to have an approval for this, but it's usually fine because as soon as you email a professor and say that you're interested in taking their course, they're pretty happy to uh, let you in. But within mine, just to <laughs> say that as well, um, it's a pretty specific field, conflict and democracy. And I can say that my classes have really hit these uh, two points from all different angles and really on the head. So I feel that if you are choosing a program you're really interested in studying, you really will study it thoroughly. Yeah. Um, building off of what Eva mentioned about professors like they're really welcoming uh, when students are enthusiastic and when they show motivation and drive to study certain subjects, even though they're not coming from the same department or the same field. Um, I think the highlight for me, aside from that, is um, the interactions that we get in our classes. Um, in my experience with the international relations and European politics classes, it's a lot of discussion work and a lot of seminars. And I really like how different students from different backgrounds are free to voice their opinion, their perspectives on certain issues. And the lecturer or the professor who is present would actually be there as a facilitator. And it's interesting because they kind of build off of those conversations and it turns out that they're part of the lesson plan. Like, I find that really interesting that we're kind of on the right track as students towards what the professor wants us to pick out and take as learning points. So I think that's the biggest highlight for me that we're all sharing our opinions and it's all going in the right track. So, yeah. Yep. For me, the highlight would be um, I was surprised how related my uh, major cultural sociology is to um, my career or the, um, the, the profession that I had before. I was in the digital marketing industry and uh, apparently cultural sociology is highly related to marketing. So it's about uh, meaning making and then um, about branding and also talking about professors, they all have their own style of teaching. But I agree with um, Anjanet that um, all the professors act like uh, facilitators, which which is very, very good for me. So it's very interactive. Uh, the classes are very, um, you know, um, two-sided. If I can add before we move on as well, that um, actually one of the things thinking back to when I was applying that I was excited about is having smaller classes because I really love when you actually um, like the lecturer knows your name and knows something about you and can kind of incorporate this into a class and every class I've taken has been relatively small and very interactive as well. So that expectation ended up being accurate. So I was really, really happy about that. Thanks. Yeah, I think um, those are all all fabulous points. And I, I just want to actually take a, a quick moment, um, actually, if, if you're watching this and you're wondering, hmm, I want to know a little bit more about these programs that people are talking about. Uh, next week, we're actually going to be doing some um, program-specific introductions where you'll hear from some professors and um, actually think some of these students will be talking as well about their experiences. But it won't just be these three programs. It will be uh, pretty much all of our programs that we will be discussing. Um, I, I guess my, my last question for you guys before we move on to uh, the very important part, which is <laughs> admissions and how actually to apply, is um, wh why do you think someone should come here? Yeah, I think that everything we've been saying along the way has been <laughs> kind of one piece of this reason. So it's there's not a single like point you can hold up and say, this is exactly why you have to come. It's really this... Um, accumulated sort of reasons that's like it's a really nice place to live. Brno is really comfortable, especially as a student. Um, the faculty, as we said, is really engaging with students. Um, classes are small. Yeah, I just mentioned it, but it's really important for me. 
uh, you have lots of resources and you can cross over into other fields and professors from these other fields are also really interactive so you can really make what you want out of it um, and and overall I think it's it's very comfortable challenging good combination of the two so I'm very happy Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I also would like, aside from the whole academic aspect, I think that the city in itself is perfect. Um, it's a city, but it's not too big and overwhelming. Coming from Dubai, I really wanted an escape from such all, like all the hustle and bustle and Brno is perfect for that because it's, it's the second largest city in the Czech Republic. Um, it has all of the resources that you could want. And I think the nice part as well as the location, like you could travel real quick over the border to Austria because it's, Vienna is like two hours away by train, I think. And then um, Prague is also nearby. It's two hours or two hours and a half by train. There are different European cities you could visit and the Czech Republic in itself is a very beautiful country. So you're in for a treat. Yeah, definitely, I agree, because if you love traveling and taking photos, like I do, so you might love Brno, because it is located in the heart, in, in the center of Europe. So, again, you know, if you want to go to cities like Bratislava, or Vienna, or Prague, um, it's it's just one bus or train right away, so um, you should definitely come here if you, if you love uh, exploring, and then it's it's really an international city. You would be surprised of how many expats, international students that live here in Brno. So you will not feel alone. And actually, on the other hand, before we leave this, if you're interested in the Czech Republic specifically, it's not such an international city that you're cut off from this. Because I, on the other hand, have not done that much traveling, to be honest, but I'm learning Czech. I have lots of Czech friends now, and I really think it's an amazing country. So it's also uh, just on the local level, something you can appreciate as well. I'm really glad that you uh, added that last bit because I think it, it's true. It's a, at least for me, uh, being non Czech myself, it's a nice balance, I think, of Bruno. Of it's uh, international enough that you uh, have the benefits of living in an international community, but it's not um, so international that you lose actually some of the Czech culture, which is part of the benefits of living in a different country. So uh, thank you guys. Um, I just want to say if anyone has any questions for the for um, our students, uh, feel free to write them. And uh, again, when we come back to the question and answers, uh, they would be happy to answer. But for now, um, we will move on to uh, the conversation with Clara about uh, how to apply in the admissions process. So welcome, Clara. Thank you for joining me. Hello. Hi. Um, so I, I was wondering if to start us off, if you could actually describe what does the application process look like? So what do they, when people need to apply, what, what sh kind of materials should they have with them? And uh, when, when do they need to be doing this? So hello, my name is Clara and uh, I work in the International Office of the Faculty of Social Studies where I'm also in charge uh, for admission process uh, to English taught programs. This admission uh, is fully online, so you don't have to travel anywhere just because of the entrance test. You just need to submit uh, the online application with uh, required documents. There are some small differences from one program to another, but uh, in general, you need to submit motivation letter, proof of English, documents from your previous education for master programs, also CV and recommendation letters, and for some programs, it's essay. After when the application is complete and the admission fee and the application fee is paid, then uh, the committee would evaluate all the materials and organize the Skype interview in English, which is also online. Yeah, thanks. Um, and if uh, people are like, okay, that was a couple of different pieces. Um, actually, if you go to our website on the admissions page, it does uh, detail out all the all of these things. So um, you can always go back to that for more information. Um, can students apply before they finish their previous education? Um, and do they need like the English certificate or can something else be used? Yes, students uh, can apply uh, before they finish uh, their current school because of the deadlines. 
And uh, in this case, they don't need to submit the final certificate, but just the proof of uh, current study would be sufficient. And uh, to answer your question about the English certificate, it's better to have some official certificate, of course, but uh, it's possible to apply also without it. Because uh, as I've told, uh, there is always Skype interview in English. So also the admission committee can evaluate the level of English. So instead of some official proof, you can ask uh, your current school to give you proof of English or you can also write uh, the honest statement where you will confirm your level. Thanks. Um, and what if students are realizing that, okay, there's a couple of different programs that they might be interested in. Can they apply to more than one program in our faculty? Yes, definitely. They can apply to how many programs they would like to, but uh, they need to submit a separate application for each program because uh, most of the programs they are from different departments so also the admission committee is different and then there will be the different skype interview with different professors great um yeah i think the the skype interview is definitely something that maybe people wonder about but it's it's definitely a, a good way for the students to also learn about the program from the professors as well to make sure it's a good fit i think yeah, that's true. And also, it's definitely better, uh, especially for people who live uh, in some countries uh, from where they need visa to make all the process online and not to be forced to travel somewhere. Yeah, definitely, for sure. Um, so since you mentioned visas, actually, could you um, maybe kind of describe what the visa process is and what we are and are not able to support with as a faculty? Yeah, sure. So, of course, uh, it's necessary to get long-term study visa to come here. And uh, for this, we send to all uh, accepted students uh, the admission documents already in Czech language and also the proof of accommodation also in the Czech language, which is required for the visa application. And then the other documents uh, must be uh, organized uh, directly by the applicants in their home countries. We can help them with this because they are their personal documents, like proof of funds from their bank or criminal record or other documents uh, which they need to collect in their home country. And what is really important that uh, at the Czech embassies, they accept documents only in the Czech language so they can't forget uh, to get the certified translation. That's definitely an important uh, step. Um, I guess the the last thing that at least I know uh, kind of a lot of people have questions about is this prior degree recognition. Um, could you describe a little bit more of what that is and why it is something that is so important? Yeah, it's uh, required because uh, all students who got their prior education in different countries than Czech or Slovak Republic need to get it formally recognized. It's uh, something we are required by the Czech law to do it. And uh, it's necessary to be enrolled at Czech University. And uh, there are differences uh, from one country to another. So I don't want to go really into the details. But in general, it's uh, necessary to have the final certificate. As I told, uh, it's not necessary to have it uh, for the application, but uh, for the enrollment to finish this uh, recognition process, it's already required. And uh, with this final certificate, there are basically three possibilities. If there are some agreements between Czech Republic and the country from where the, uh, education is, then uh, there is uh, no authentic, uh, no required apostille or superlegalization. But uh, if there is no agreement like this, students need to get the apostille or the superlegalization. It's already described uh, at our webpage, so you can check it uh, to more details. Uh, only thing uh, I would add to this is that uh, it's not possible to get it uh, when you come to the Czech Republic. It's always necessary to have it before you travel here because you uh, can get it only in the country from where your education is. Yeah, that, um, that, that's a lot of, I think, really good, useful information. And uh, as you can see on the screen now, we have um, our admission email up as well. So uh, 
people can feel free to write that and uh, we can get back to you with other questions that come up. Um, Claude, do you, do you um, feel like there's other things regarding the admissions or what you hope students know before applying? Uh, I think that uh, if you have question, you can always uh, contact me via email because uh, as I told, there are big differences, especially in prior degree recognition, also sometimes in visa processes from one country to another. So if you have some exit questions, feel free to contact me anytime. Great. Um, so uh, thank you all uh, for for joining our live stream. Um, I see that we've had a couple questions, um, so we we can uh, answer those, um, and we can start with um, the kind of admission of program specific ones. And Clara can can help me. Um, yeah. So does this university offer scholarships for international students? I, I realized um, that probably an important thing for us to also add is is that these programs do have tuition fees attached to them. Uh, it's different for bachelor's and master's and PhD studies, so you can find those fees on our website. Um, I, I don't know, Clara, if you want to discuss uh, the scholarship concept. Um, yeah, we have some uh, kind of scholarship, but uh, these are more for uh, current students, for example, to support their mobility if they are students here in Brno and they would like to stay besides this one semester in another university. So there are some scholarship. There is also accommodation grant once per semester. But uh, now we don't offer uh, any scholarship uh, to help students with the tuition fee. So all English programs, as you already mentioned, are paid and it's not possible to support this. Yeah, I think that's the, a key thing that, yeah, our, our scholarships that we do have is once, you, uh, once you're already a student here. So definitely something that we would want to. Um, if you have more questions, please feel free to answer. Um, yeah, I saw that this one actually came up a couple different times in uh, different ways. Um, I, I, I will say that one of the new programs that will come up in probably fall 2022 is a politics and media studies bachelor's program. So um, if you're looking for fall 2022 or later, uh, you can know that. But um, Clara, maybe you can discuss um, what students should do if they were looking at the Czech version, which does have a journalism program. Yeah, of course. It's uh, possible also for international students uh, to study in uh, Czech programs. But uh, of course, it's uh, necessary to know Czech language. Uh, as I know, the minimum uh, to be accepted, uh, it's a uh, level B2, because uh, with lower level also students won't be able to go through the admission process. And uh, also the certificate of Czech language uh, is required to apply for the Czech program. So if you are fluent in Czech, definitely you are welcome to study. Yeah, so um, otherwise, uh, definitely will be some time before uh, uh, we can't start uh, next year, but with the journalism or media in English, but um, it's nice to know that so many students are interested in it. Um, I think we have uh, another question. Yeah, so um, maybe our students can join us back um, and they can a answer what sports are like uh, for them. I know, uh, Anjanette, you actually had to do a sports class as part of the bachelor's program. <laughs> do you want to describe that? Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, so as Aaron said, that I had to do some sports or PE credits in my bachelor's degree as it's a requirement, which I think is a pretty good thing because it's kind of nice to be able to stretch your legs and do some physical activity. You know, you're not meant to be sitting around all the time with your heads buried in books. So yeah, uh, there was a huge range of activities. It was really hard for me to choose. Like there was cardio training, there was Pilates, there was even weightlifting, I think. So it's all up to you. There are many choices. Anything you want, they'll probably have it. Like I know they even had something like I don't know, like they had something with skiing as well. So it's all up to your um, preferences. But also um, outside of school, you can go to gyms and do sports activities. Like as a student, you're going to be getting 
an ISIC card and I really like using that because it actually gives you a lot of discounts and as a student you can get a lot of entrance discounts into gyms which have classes as well if you want to do yoga or something like that or if you just want to use their equipment as well so there's definitely a choice for sporty activities in the city. Yeah, I um I, I wanted to say that I think that not even just that, there's um actually other other interesting things. There are a lot of bike paths um kind of around the whole region of where Bruno is, which is South Moravia. It's actually pretty known for the for the biking. There's um even we are along the bike path that goes from Warsaw to Vienna. So if you are an avid biker, that is something to check out. Um, and then uh, there's an organization that uh, invites international students called Call of the Woods, which actually does a different hiking trip every weekend um, normally. And it uh, shows different areas of hiking around. So I think that uh, if, the, if that's something that uh, you're looking for and that's important, that's definitely an option. Um, also, if you are more of liking to watch sports. There is the university hockey team, which has its own games. And in general, there's the hockey stadium of the Komata uh, Bruno team, which is pretty good. So there's definitely lots of other like pickup games and stuff that you can do. Um, so thank you everyone for your time. I, I know that we didn't get to all the questions that are in, um, in the uh, in the comment section, but um, we will respond to them um, a little bit after this live stream and we will get you those answers so that I uh, don't worry, they will be answered. Um, so I just wanted to say that um, and thank you for taking the time to watch. Um, I'm not sure if anyone else has any last last words to, to say, but. Um, well, maybe I can add um, because I love running or jogging and then Bruno has a lot of parks um, for um, outdoor activities. So. Um, in spring, summer, and autumn, um, I definitely, you know, go for a run every weekend. Yeah, it's 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 nice and not too hilly, actually. So if you're not a big fan of running up hills, then you, you then you're solid. Um, so thank you again for taking the time. Uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, visit us um, at our website fss.muni.cz/en. The en for English, obviously. You can also email us at admission um, at fss.muni.cz or on our Facebook page, which is what uh, we will be responding to the questions from. So have no fear. Uh, you have many ways of contacting us and finding out more information. And if you are interested in more detailed explanations about the different study programs, like I said, we will be doing the program introductions next week. And you can find that schedule on our Facebook page. So thank you again for your time. And we look forward to seeing you here.